Hello, welcome to the fourth in our series of new updated videos on Monopoly. In the previous videos, we've analysed some examples of Monopoly and how the firms with market power can profit maximise, and also what causes changes in the level of profit. In this video, we're going to cover two aspects of Monopoly. Firstly, the entry barriers that can protect the market share of businesses with Monopoly power. And then secondly, a quick look at some of the main limits or constraints on the market power of a monopoly seller. Here's our classic diagram, the monopoly diagram showing a business with market power able to profit maximize and earn a hefty super normal profit, price above average cost, price above normal uh, profits. And uh, we, we mentioned in the past some examples of businesses with sizable market uh, share, Apple, has a 29% share of the global tablet market. It's a good example of a working monopoly. Apple and Samsung, and to a lesser extent, Huawei and Microsoft dominating the, the tablet market. Apple's a really good example. Uh, wow, in the fourth quarter of the fiscal year 2020, Apple reported a profit of over 12.5 billion US dollars. And you can see there's been a huge increase in their profitability over, over the last 10 years or so, particularly, of course, after the iPhone was introduced in 2007 and the iPad came into being in 2010. In fact, the yearly total profit for Apple has risen from about $6 billion in 2008 to about $55 billion in 2019. Last year, Apple made a profit of over $1 billion per week. Staggering. So the key question becomes how can a monopolist protect their super normal profits, particularly in the long run when there's the threat of the entry of new firms? Well, think about a business like Coca-Cola, again, a business we mentioned in a previous video. Their market share has ebbed and flowed, but actually look at the y-axis, it's been shortened. Their market share since 2004 in the carbonated drinks market has uh, never been less than 40% and sometimes now rising up towards 44% of the market. So clearly they are able to use successfully some barriers to entry. And how do you protect your monopoly profits? Well, companies uh, that generate high profits, high returns on capital, uh, need to build barriers to entry to avoid cutthroat competition in their market. So monopolists can protect their market power and their profits through barriers to entry now. Some of these barriers are, are natural. They're natural. So some of these barriers are natural or intrinsic to an industry. Others are strategic. So the classic examples will be something like economies of scale, where a big firm with market power is able to be used on a scale at a level where the unit cost is so much lower than a rival competitor. Could be a monopoly has uh, achieved vertical integration. They they've got control of the supply chain from farm to dining table, they may have a vertical integration control of the supply chain. They may have accumulated significant brand loyalty in the market, or they control an important platform technology, such as Amazon Web Service, which allows them to build substantial market share. They could also have legal protection of their ideas, the legal protection of intellectual property, for example, through patents, trademarks, and copyright. Not gonna to spend too much on this, on this video because we do have a separate video on barriers to entry in markets, an updated video which I strongly recommend. Uh, you'll find it in, in several playlists uh, in, the, in the set. Have a go please at this practice multiple choice question. Press the pause button when you're ready. The monopoly power of a business is likely to rise if. Have a go at this question. So when will the monopoly power of business rise? The answer is C, when barriers to entry increase because it makes it harder, tougher, more difficult for new firms to enter the market. Now, what about what about constraints on, on a monopolist? You know, oftentimes you read in essays, a monopolist has unfettered, unlimited power. They can set any price they want. They can make whatever profits they like. Of course, that's not the case. All businesses even if they have market power, all firms, all suppliers face constraints. Let me just take you through some examples that might be helpful for your notes. Here they are. I'll leave the slide up as we go through. The first constraint on the market power of a, of a firm is that there could well be an industry regulator. Now, a regulatory authority, Ofcom, for example, in telecoms in the UK, 
uh, off what regulating the water industry uh, those regulators are often charged with the power to investigate any allegations instances of anti-competitive behavior so they're there really to protect the interests of consumers in the long term to protect consumer welfare and of course the regulators regulators often are quite powerful when they start making those investigations the secondly is that they can go further the regulator may well impose introduce a price capping regime on a monopoly they're going to limit the price that can be charged often a firm has domestic monopoly power but actually globally uh, there could well be significant international competition and free trade between nations can be an important constraint on the power of a, of a domestic monopoly and even if you have a monopoly the market can still be contestable because we know that there, all, there will always be some disruptive firms seeking to break the established monopoly power of a firm. We know that's the case. The airlines have seen the emergence of low-cost rivals. The supermarkets, been there for decades, have seen the, the rival of Aldi and Little and others. Uh, in, in financial technology, disrupting the power of the commercial banks and other lenders. So new technologies, changing states of technology, can threaten market power. And ultimately, uh, a monopolist is constrained by his or her demand curve. The willingness and ability of people to buy the goods and services is a constraint, as is the elasticity of demand, the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. I go back to a point I've made several times before in these videos. The extent of monopoly power often does depend on how we define the market. So London Underground does have a monopoly on tube travel in London, probably, but there are alternatives, and increasingly those alternatives are being used. A couple of examples of uh, where these constraints become real, and I'll post links to each of these super articles from the FT in the comments section of the video. Here we have the United States uh, competition regulators accusing Google of strangling competition and investigating Google. Uh, they regard them as a, as a monopoly gatekeeper in the world of web search. And uh, here's a great article, a tremendous article that came out in the autumn of 2019 about the power of free. And if a monopoly gives away a free service, is that a problem from the point of view of consumer welfare? Lo there's loads of discussion at the, moment, at the moment about those big suppliers, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, and others, and the extent to which they have too much monopoly power in markets. Should they be even be broken up uh, at some point in the future? So keep a, keep a good eye out for that. Now, we're going to build some more videos on Monopoly. That's the first four, and it's taking through the analysis of price and output and entry barriers and constraints. There's much more to say. Monopoly and welfare, monopoly and price discrimination, natural monopoly, and other factors. But we'll build these videos uh, into the playlist. Okay, thank you very much indeed.